Good afternoon and welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. It's Friday. It's just after 2 o'clock. That means it's time for the weekly markets review from NASDAQ's Markets Intelligence Desk with Chris Dearborn, one of our managing directors on the desk. Chris, as always, thank you for joining me for my favorite hit of the week because we know it, we, are, we are in the <laughs> final innings of the work week um, when we do this. But right behind us, we see a lot of green, a very different picture than we saw in the beginning of the week with the sea of red. Of course, Trade Talks and the Fed in focus this week. Absolutely. You know, you got the Santa Claus rally that we've been waiting for. A little green could be very good for that. We've had plenty of red. Now we're going to go for the green. There's been a lot of items that really have kind of come forward. And what you're looking at is a well-rounded risk-on rally across the boards here. It started with Monday, continued with Chairman Powell's speech on Wednesday. The markets have held those levels all week. Right. It's been a fantastic week for the markets. Volumes have been good validating this move. And with that, we're up almost 45 to 5% for the week coming into right. uh, an hour and a half left. I will, but I do want to check you on this, though. Clearly, G20 is what's on yeah. everyone's mind over the weekend. Um, I, I think it would be a pretty risky position to put anything on because there has been no clarity. There is no settlement on trade. Um, and quite frankly, I, I think traders in the markets are getting exhausted of trading off of tweets. You don't develop policy that way. <laughs> No. So if you take a step back and you look at the economic data, mm -hmm. it's been very, very good. The holiday sales coming out of the turkey weekend, as they we're calling it, mm -hmm. you know, Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Cyber Monday were ex excellent. Over $58 billion in sales. Amazon posted they put, sold over 180 million items over that time period. Cyber Monday, $7.9 in sales. You're seeing records made across the board. Consumer confidence is high. We had that nice economic point this week. And what you're looking at there is a, a really a consumer who is spending, and that is good for the bottom line. So then you flip it over to the macro, which is where we are right now. This G20 meeting has had the date circled for well over a month. And the question is, what is going to come out of it? There's really three types of scenarios, but knowing how things get tweeted out, it could be 20 different scenarios. Well, it's a matter of Russell Trump staying on target mm -hmm. with his messaging as well. Um, really, I, I, yes. he, perhaps he might be a little bit more contained because he does have some domestic issues clearly mm -hmm. that he's dealing with in the background. Um, but with the scenarios that, that you're presenting is no news, good news. Does it have to knock it out of the park since there's a lot of high expectations? A neutral meeting would be good. An agreement between China and the U.S. to further the talks or even stall a little bit of the tariffs going forward. Remember, January 1, we go from 10 percent to 25 percent on over 267 billion or 200 million dollar billion worth of tariffs. That's a tremendous input cost to American manufacturers, and that's really a lot of money to push on to the consumer. Will the consumer be able to absorb that or not? That's a big question. Second, on a positive note, they agreed to eliminate tariffs, subsidies, and a non. Uh, restrictive environment. That's not going to happen, but that's the high point of that. Anything in between that neutral and that high end will be great for the markets. It'll be a positive influence for the traders, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for some type of decision one way or another. Traders hate uncertainty. Investors hate uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Uncertainty brings chop to the market. You're up and down one, two, three percent, and that's what we've had. On the negative side of things, the meeting goes to hell in a handbasket. Right. And you know what? All of a sudden, you've got a full-on trade war. Not only does he focus on China, then he turns his sights to somebody else, maybe Europe again. And that's not good for the consumer here in the U.S. Right. That is not good for the investing environment, and thus that is not good for listed companies and their bottom line. Right. Well, let's talk about some sectors that would be mm -hmm. impacted. Let's start it off with consumer staples, because yep. I think that's the most relevant to us as people, whether you know you're, we work on Wall Street or if you're a retail investor or not involved in the market at all. It's going to impact you one way or the other. Right. So let's broaden that even to the consumer as a whole, right? So what you're looking at, especially, we'll go to the staples. So staples has traditionally been a safe environment for investors. Along with utilities, when times of uncertainty, people will go into dividend-paying stocks. They'll go into the consumer items that people need to live on a day-to-day -day basis, and the utilities on part of that because they're a safe haven for environment. They have low growth but they have steady price points, which is what investors want, looking to protect capital and grow it at a small amount as opposed to growth items. So companies like Pepsi and all the others have un all done very well, held their own. And the question would be then, if you flip to the other side of it, who has exposure to that? 
so from an investor standpoint, you can see dollars flowing into that. But from, a from an investor standpoint, how are those companies actually doing and what input costs are they being, is being affected by that? You know, are you importing items from China that's going to be newly taxed? And instead of 10%, which you've already baked in, to 25%, how do you pass that on? Mm -hmm. you know, and will the consumer be willing to take that? You know, the PPI will, will be proof in the pudding along with the CPI, and, and you don't know what's going to happen there. Right. You know, so you go back to, go back to the macro, then go back to more sectors. Look at GDP. Came in, it, it was healthy. It was a good number. Second print. And a little bit light here and there, but still steady growth. 3.5, 3.6% is where you kind of want to be. It's still above the target rate. So you're seeing the U.S. grow. Right. But the problem with it is, you know, what's the future? And that's where a lot of the hit has been coming on the corporate guidance going forward. Right. And that's really where the issue is. It's not how well we've done in the past. We've had a very good run. The question is how we're going to do going forward. And that guidance is kind of key. And you see a number of companies taking down guidance because they, they are uncertain. Know. Right. Right. They're uncertain of what's going to bring. So other sectors that are going to be affected, tech, obviously, mm -hmm. right? You know, Apple's got certain exemptions right now. If you never know what's going to happen with that, it's the, the top tech company out there. You've got a number of others as well that are going to input players to that. What's going to happen there? Can that price point be affected? Again, another guidance issue there um, as well. So you look at that whole broad-based sector, tech is what got us here to this marketplace, right? And with that, what is the continued guidance for those companies moving forward? And that's where we are right now. We're uncertain. So it's not really that we are in a negative trading environment, though it is a sell the news type of event before this week happened. What you're really in is a consolidation period waiting for that next aha moment, one way or another, to go. And people have had this weekend circled for that aha moment. And that's what we're looking for. All right. Well, we'll see where we are next Friday. Okay. I'm sure it will be, there will be no shortage of headlines, that's for sure. Thank you so much for joining me, as always. Thank you, Jill. And thank you for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.